know what? A bit earlier, all that following around was kind of making my head spin. But now, I've got a little pep in my step. And I think, I think, I think I love this! <laughs> I think I love this little life! Ah, no one can find us anymore out here. I feel amazing. I feel great. Ah, thank God I still have uh, Lukey's banana. Ah, uh, 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 you crack me up. Ow, my back, though. <laughs>
Here's your Kroger delivery, ma'am. This is a Kroger ad! Ah! This is Kroger Crazy Delivery, a brand new mini game in Barry Avenue. You can play as a professional Kroger delivery driver, bringing Kroger orders to the Krogies of Barry Avenue. Compete against your friends or your siblings for the highest score. I'm gonna get there first! No, I'm gonna get there first! Wait, is that Jack? Snooze, you lose, guys. Yeah! <laughs> Crazy Delivery mimics the actual Kroger delivery experience, with trained professional drivers bringing groceries to your door in these cool refrigerated trucks. Ice cream stays frozen and produce stays fresh for only $6.95 per delivery. Kroger Delivery provides customers with fresh groceries at lower than low prices. Click the link below to place your order today. Service not available in all locations and delivery time is not guaranteed. Restrictions may apply. See site for detail. few things. Why? Is that Murph? How's he doing? He's good. So cute. I'm really happy that you have a little friend now. Yeah. Oh, but what I was thinking is that you could hang your drawings up on the wall if you can't think of anything to put up. I could help you frame them. I, I have things that I want to put up. I, I wouldn't need, I don't, I'm not gonna put my drawings up. But I don't even really, I don't really draw anymore. Oh. Okay, but are you are you still doing your? Wait a minute, let me start this part. Oh, oh no, I don't like that. Okay, are you? Wait a minute, I got another thing. Okay, okay. But you're still doing your, your songs, right? Your music? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not like, it's mostly in my head. Um, I need to get it out onto paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. I told you my therapist said it's really important to get your thoughts down on paper, like journaling. How's that going, by the way? It's going good. I just had an appointment the other day, and apparently I have a wounded inner child. Hello, Joseph. Or do you go by Joe? Joseph's fine. Uh, whatever you want. So, what brings you here today? Well, I feel like lately I've just been... Honestly, really struggling, and I don't know how to... Oh, so it sounds like you're just a lazy piece of shit. When are you gonna get a fucking job and grow up? What is wrong with you? Hit harder. Do you love me? me, me? I'm glad you're nothing like him. Like him. You are like him. Joseph! Oh, um... Sorry, I... What did you say? I... I'm, I'm talking to you, and you're not seeming to listen to me. I am listening. I, I'm sorry. I, just, I'm not, I'm just a little um, in my head today, lately. Well, 
I get it. I've been feeling a little foggy too lately. Are you taking your medicine? Yeah, of course. You're making sure you're drinking enough water, eating healthy. Yes. Get enough sleep. Yes, of course. Are you keeping your place clean? You know, that can affect how you feel. Is this like 20 questions? Like, okay, you... I just want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Well, I, I don't need you to to do that. Okay. I'm sorry I said anything. I probably need to go. I got I... a lot to do. You don't have to go. I, I was just... That's okay. Yeah. I, I love you, son. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you. Bye.
is your name? Uh, Dice. And can you say, I play Oddly Puddle? Um, hey, Oddly Peter. <laughs> yeah. Oddly Puddle is from Inner Space is the story about a young man with special needs who is able to comprehend far more than he can communicate. Oddly Puddle is from Inner Space is a very heartwarming, loving story about a young man who has special needs with very limited verbal communication ability who lives in a community that is welcoming and loves him unconditionally. It's really about the fact that although he is unable to communicate like everyone else does, he's able to understand and he's able to connect with the people that love him and that are in his life. The Theater Bug was lucky enough to first produce this show in 2014 in partnership with the Special Education Advocacy Center. Our lead actor, Ty Smith, is an incredible young actor with Down syndrome, and he has blown us all out of the water. The Theater Bug has been very intentional about creating a space for Tice. And even in this rehearsal process, it really is proof that if you give them the opportunity to rise to the occasion, they will. And that goes for anybody with special needs. It's really been a beautiful process to see everybody be so patient and loving and kind and flexible and really committed enough to the show to say this is an awesome opportunity to have someone who lives this story tell this story and we're going to create a rehearsal space to make it as awesome as possible. We wanted to make sure that this story was as honest as possible for Tice and his journey in life. And we had the incredible nurturing guidance of both his mom, Pasha Smith, and our partner organization this year, Courtney's Corner. I am the founder and artistic director of Courtney's Corner. It's an arts education program for individuals with special needs. Um, we do year-round programming in the creative arts, and we're the partner organization for Oddly Puddles from Inner Space. I had the pleasure of growing up with a sister with special needs. Um, I loved performing, and she was kind of a keychain and loved to perform as well, um, but she didn't have those opportunities. And so being able to come back as a staff member and provide opportunities, it's healing for me. It is um, inspiring to see them on stage together. We have loved working with them because of their expertise and their heart, but in particular because Kelsey was a theater bug student and seeing her come full circle back to the bug with her own kids that she has nurtured and loved into being has been just one of the most rewarding experiences at the theater bug to date. We have an amazing journey as the audience because we are able to hear Audley's thoughts pre-recorded through voiceover throughout the show while the characters on stage can't hear what he's saying or thinking. My favorite part of rehearsals for Audley Puddle is where we get to um, see Tice on stage and see him perform as Audley Puddle and he's doing a great job. There are a lot of kids out there who are from inner space, as people will see in the show, who have something to say, just like each and every one of us do. And I think this is a show that'll make people realize that there's something important inside of each and every single kid that just has to be shared. He just has such a charismatic and such a wonderful personality on stage. And it's amazing how when we all see how he acts on stage and it makes us want to bump our energy up and meet his level because there are some days that we don't have it in us. But Tice is just always ready once he hits that stage. We had expectations that just weren't high enough of him over the years here at the Theater Bug. And he has really proven himself to be a remarkable young actor. I think it'll be a real eye opener for people to understand that it's worth taking a second look at them, giving them a chance, having the, the expectation of them, and just dealing with them like you would anybody else because they're more like you than they're not. The Oddly Puddle cast is an all-star group of young people who are absolutely lighting up the stage every single day. And then we have the gift of being able to end every performance with a brand new musical number written by myself and Laura Matula and performed by the young people at Courtney's Corner. 
Seeing the bridge built between our two organizations is such a wonderful encouragement. And I hope that our audience members see this show and find ways to be more inclusive and more loving and to advocate harder for these absolutely incredible people. Mercedes is very happy and, and it's joyful. The reason why you hear me as her voice instead of her herself is to show some kids are nonverbal and the way they, that they talk to each other is through their thoughts. It's special for me because I've walked through life with Bella. It really brings me joy that I can be her voice. This is the 12th fully produced original play or musical that has been on a theater bug stage. And we feel so strongly that creating material that is teaching our audiences and our kids and ourselves how to be better people is what we strive for always. I think Oddly Puddle is important. Um for cast members and for audience members um, to see a day in the life of a family with an individual with special needs. I think it brings um, clarity to maybe some questions that people didn't even know that they had. It's a really wonderful opportunity, not only to see some really incredible performances from young people and a really unique story, but to learn and teach advocacy for these kids in our community. Even if there are some differences that limit their ability to communicate or limit their ability to connect on the level that we connect, they're like everyone else in a sense that they desire that connection, they desire that love, they desire that community. Does Oddly Puddle make you happy, Tice? Yep. I would encourage audiences to come see this show. I really do believe it can change minds and change hearts. Come with an open mind and an open heart. Um, and just remember that the story that's being told is one that's lived as well, and it's lived by so many people. And if it just softens your heart enough to reach out to people that maybe you would never reach out to, or to speak up for people that maybe you never would have spoken up for, or if you're in a position to offer an opportunity to someone with special needs, come with an open heart and realize that they're capable of so much more than many people give them credit for.
like you left your job, got a husband or wife. If you turn 26, lose your folks plan too. Healthcare.gov is here for you. If you need health coverage at a crossroad, file for divorce. Welcome to my new filming room for now, which is actually my third son's old bedroom now that he's back at college. I have converted it and re-wallpapered it, and I just want to show you how good it looks. Um, many of you have asked me about this paper, which I have gotten my other videos I make from a place called Wallpapery, and this one is from there as well. But make sure you follow their priming directions if you're going to use peel and stick. Okay, so anyway, um, I want to talk about this concept around staying a child and how many of us can be walking through our lives at 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 90, and really not be aware that the wounded inner child is running the show. Even though on the outside you are accomplished and independent and you get things done, or maybe you don't do those things, but even still, it doesn't mean that you are childish or immature. What we're talking about are the wounded parts of you, which I believe are always seeking healing. And in fact, I made a TikTok last week where I was, it was just like music and words. And I said something about like when your wounded inner child chooses a partner that you basically hope is gonna heal all your trauma. And a few people misread that as me saying like, oh, you're just putting your healing on someone else. Like that's no one's job but yours. Which is interesting because that's not what I was saying. What I was saying was the inner child, which is the unconscious part of ourselves, that is the part that is choosing. And we don't know that. And so that's the part that's seeking healing. So it was misread as me saying you're supposed to heal. But the funny part is, or not funny, but interesting part is, even if you do know what you're doing, there's a role that people can play in helping you heal. That what we cannot heal as islands unto ourselves completely. There's only so far you could go, whether that's you know through a therapist, through friendships, relationships, whatever, parenting, there is a, you know, there's a reciprocity in that. But I wasn't saying that, but it was interesting to hear that. But the point is that the inner child is choosing. And so the inner child is the one walking around wounded, I believe, choosing partners, accepting or not accepting things, advocating or not advocating you know, for our lives, whatever we're doing. So I thought we would talk about that a little bit more because it really does play into my understanding of my own brain in terms of being sort of naive or maybe childlike at times. But really it's about the wound and how that part was, was showing up in my life. So um, one of the biggest insults my mom could sort of fling at me was um, grow up, Kimberly. Grow up. And it wasn't the insult in the way that she could be directly very harmful. So this is more like the low-key digging comments. This wouldn't have been the very direct and hurtful things. And it was always like, um, you know, you don't know what it's like to run a business. Grow up. Things like that. Which is interesting because I think that when you have a lot of childhood trauma, of course, there are parts of you that don't get to develop that you miss out on the, the moving through certain developmental stages because you are in survival mode. And we can get stuck in those stages. But it wasn't even, I'm not even really talking about that. Like, you know how somebody can be like perpetually 16, it feels like. It wasn't like that. It was just like the wounded child was like sleepwalking through my life and thinking they were no longer wounded. Like I had it figured out and I knew what I was doing, but not really knowing it. And then her insults that way were, were very hard, but they were hurtful at the time. You know, I'd be like, okay, I I couldn't, I wasn't running a business because when I finished my master's degree at almost 30, after changing careers, I got married and, and immediately began having a family and wanted to be home with them because I'd grown up in daycare alone. And so, you know, it's ironic because I ended up, I think, being, I think she was jealous, I think it bothered her. Obviously, she didn't have good impulse control around saying and feeling things. And at the time, we were, she would live with us four or five times over the course of my marriage for many months. We would give her buy her car. All of her furnishings were from me. I'd pay for everything when she was with me in during those years. So it's like, it's this weird deal where she was actually being cared for when she should have taken care of herself and yet accusing me of that. 
and it being hurtful, but like I was going to the irony, I was going to say, the irony is that I ended up being a single mom, raising four kids alone, basically full custody, having to build a career, going back to, you know, getting a, do getting a doctorate in my 40s, building a business and a practice, and not having anyone else to rely on, you know, so it's interesting now, but I think it was threatening to her. But the point is that even her saying that is an interesting choice of words, like grow up, because it was like, yeah, I'm this wounded child in large part because of you, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I know what I'm doing, right? Like, you know, kids are like, like I'll do it, me do it. It's like, you know, when they're going through like that toddler stage and kind of another version of when they're separating in adolescence. It's kind of like that, but like I had no idea that's what I was doing. I thought it was like fully in my adult self. So what can it look like when your wounded inner child is making decisions for you and you don't know it? Because this is where I think it could have made a difference if I had known. It might not have, but I, I do believe that it could have. So I'm going to pull these from the CPTSD website just on that sort of average pulling up what does it look like to have a wounded inner child, especially as it relates to complex PTSD and complex trauma? And the first thing is, and I've discussed this a lot, but it's like this deep feeling that something is wrong with you, that you are unlovable and unworthy. And I would have never, if you'd said, do you feel lovable and worthy? I would have said, yeah, because my sense of self was enough to feel that way. But the way it played out in me truly not believing that was worthy was in my lack of boundary setting, my partner choice, the things that I, you know, would, would not say to friends that hurt my feelings, that I would just end relationships or friendships, not self-advocating, um, not taking care of myself physically, maybe neglecting things that were uh, important, you know, or um, just generally, it, it wasn't reflected in how I showed up for myself in my life. And even though it was in other ways, the core, when it got really triggered, was that I don't believe that I believed I was worthy of those things. And so that deep feeling that, you know, going like, I was always in trouble, but back to having vigilance in my eggshell parents, right? Everything was like, no matter what, you know, I feel like, that's amazing. Like, she should do that. Deep inside. Deep inside. Deep inside. Deep inside. bed of Zaxby's crinkle fries, hand breaded chicken, hardwood smoked bacon, and buttermilk ranch. It's the perfect comfort food. Pillow sold separately, chicken bacon ranch loaded fries, only at Zaxby's. Mr. Beans, did you put him in this dance? Stop, don't 
I did. Woo! You guys, we promoted this game. You've probably seen it all over your Roblox account. Okay, this way, this way. Oh my god. Where are you going? You're pushing me. What? Yo, your friend sucks. Stop it. Don't be rude. Mitchie, Mitchie, Mitchie is still trying. Mitchie, you got it. Oh god. <laughs> I was worried the obvious were going to be too hard for the little kids. Oh my god. Oh, oh, my god. Oh, no, no, no. She's got it. She's got it. gluten allergies and insensitivities right now i command your body to align with the word of god she is not your backup plan she's not the half time she's not your spare time she's not some downtime and she's most definitely not a sometime The salmon have taught us a lot about If you ever think about me if, if you meow, you're hot. You are one of the Meow. For five, four more, three more, two more. Hold it up, pulse it up, hold it up, pulse it up for eight. Verse seven, verse six. Dad, Dad, there's like whores here and stuff. Did you just work for me? Oh, I, I, I'm Boston CEO. I own many big establishments, honey. Did you just work for me? No, I just didn't put the Apple Store. I own that store. Yeah. of litter box odors then you need the litter robot it's not just cleaning itself it's locking away odors too My one question for mike what's my gender <laughs> you are you, what's jeffrey's gender you, ide you you identify as 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 he slash he fuck yeah bro all right was that <laughs> hey i'm a dude i love makeup i This is Caliban. He's made out of clay. How do you know? I watched it last night. I know, but I didn't even know oh, this season was out. I thought it's we were. Not out. I, then they how did you see this? Mama, they gave me the code. Oh my God. <laughs> Does anybody else want to with road. me today? <laughs> Women and men in the UK wear much more makeup oh, than man. they do here. As oh, a nation. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, did you mind sitting there? No, I'm saving the seat for my friend Ross. You mean Dr. Geller? Doctor? Oh, I didn't know he had a nickname. Oh, you he won't sit here. Only the people in the white coat sit over there. And only the people in the blue blazer sit over here. Yes. Okay. It's awesome. Yeah.
Consistency. Oh man, what is this? Representing Marlon Brando. If you were a fraud. practice of stopping is very crucial in the Buddhist tradition. There are moments when uh, we don't do anything, we just sit there. But our body has not stopped. There's a tension in our body. There's a kind of energy that push, push you push your body. Your body wants to do something, to be active, to
to run, to do something. Your body does not have the capacity to rest, to stop. That is why uh, stopping does not mean just stopping the mind, but stopping the body. Because the body also has the habit of running, of being in uh, movement. And there is, a, there is a feeling of restlessness in the body. The body and the mind are the inter are. The body contains the mind, and the mind contains the body. They intercontain each other. That is why helping the body to stop, you can help the mind to stop also. And helping the mind to stop, you help the body to stop. You practice with body and mind at the same time, not just with the mind. That is why meditation includes the body. You don't just meditate with your mind. You meditate with your body. That is why it's good that we practice. Uh, I have arrived. I am home. I don't want to run anymore. And you enjoy doing nothing. Just feeling that you are home. And you want to really rest. And you like to uh, listen to the music of uh, your breathing in and out. Your heart is playing music. And your lungs is playing music. You just tune to that kind of music. And whatever feelings and emotions arise, you allow that music of uh, breathing to uh, embrace it. And the Buddhist term for for stopping is uh, shamatha. You are not searching for anything at all. You are completely at ease in the present moment. And that is the meaning of shamatha. It sounds easy, but we need some training. We need a strong will also. We need a big desire in order to be able to stop. Because the habit of running is very strong in us. In our body and in our mind. And the habit of running, the habit energy, might have been transmitted by our parents. Our parents may have run all their life. And they may have uh, inherited it from our grandparents. But now we have a chance to encounter Buddha Dharma, and Buddha said, Stop, my child. And then we have a, a chance to transform that habit energy. I have arrived. I am home. It means I don't feel the need to run anymore. What I am looking for, it is right here, right now. And that is why we need the insight in order to really stop. That is uh, Vipassana.
all the leaves have fallen off the tree, and it makes me feel sad. But I don't really know why. Hey, Annabelle. Hey, Audley. How was school? School is like some cruel form of torture today. I hate the fall. Sometimes I see the tree starting to lose its leaves, and I get this falling feeling too. Like I'm a red leaf coming off a branch, and there's nothing to hold on to. I like when Annabelle talks like this. It reminds me of inner space. Maybe that's why sometimes I'm homesick for her when she goes away. In inner space, you can get homesick for people too, not just houses. I wish you could hear me. I wish I knew what you were thinking. I bet it's brilliant stuff. It is. Like alternative fuels or how to cure cancer. Mostly, just how much I love you. That means oddly, right? Oddly. Annabelle. Annabelle. so much to say to you, Annabelle. Oddly, I wish that I could hear your thoughts, Annabelle. Oddly, I bet they're all about great things like adventures in a far off place are they nope oddly annabelle do you think of ways to save the world or cure disease or make world peace do you Would you like to dance? I'll be back. 
Joseph. I'm, I'm so sorry. What? I didn't know. I think I was. I think you're wrong. I do need someone. I. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I can't do all this on my own. I just look around and I feel like everybody, everybody has it together. And I just can't seem to figure it out. And I have all the privilege in the world, all the free time all the ability to create a wonderful life and all I do is waste it. And now look at me. I'm a monster. I don't think anyone has it figured out. I look around and I see time and time again, nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows how they got where they are or why they're there. They can only give their best guess. You of all people should not be apologizing to me. <laughs> I, I didn't realize how messy it had gotten in here. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. And you're not a monster. You are everything to me. And I don't know why it's taken me so long to see that. No one's ever said that to me. I think this song is ending. Maybe I'll write something new. I don't know if I'm gonna see you like this again. But I promise, from now on, I'll always take care of you. Thank you.